volcanoes. In the lower 48 U.S. states, the public is largely aware that a series of active volcanoes exist in the west central portion of three states, ranging from Washington to California. Here, well known volcanoes include Mount St. Helens, which catastrophically erupted in 1980, Mount Hood, which erupted as recently as 1866, and Lassen Peak, which erupted during World War I from 1914 to 1917. And yet, while these systems compose a portion of the 20 active volcanoes that make up the United States portion of the Cascade Range, which itself stretches for 600 miles in length, these are not the only potentially active volcanoes located in the lower 48 U.S. states. So, why are there 25 active volcanoes outside of the Cascade Range in the lower 48 states, including in Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Idaho? The answer is that there is actually more than a singular volcanic province in this region which allows volcanoes to erupt in a set area, with the actual total being nine provinces. This video will briefly outline each of these regions, some of which overlap in certain areas. For example, five volcanoes are located on the raised Colorado Plateau, but only three of these, specifically Marka Gunt, the Yuen Karet Volcanic Field, and the San Francisco Volcanic Field, can owe their existence purely to an unusual phenomenon referred to as a lithospheric drip. Since the lower crust in this region is unusually dense and thick, material pulled in the lithosphere like a drop of sap before detaching from the surrounding lithosphere. Then, large amounts of hotter material in the mantle rushed upwards to fill the empty space in what was previously a section of lithosphere, and this motion pushed the crust upwards. At the same time, magma intruded into weak points on the uplifted plateau, forming scattered volcanic fields on the surface. Shifting to the west, there are actually three other provinces located within California which cause volcanoes to exist other than the Cascade Range, which starts around Lassen Peak and heads northwards. Here, the simplest to explain is the San Andreas Fault Zone, which, as a major plate boundary, serves as a path of least resistance for magma to intrude into. Since the Pacific Plate and North American Plate are sliding against one another in an uneven manner, sometimes what are known as pull apart basins form. Two such pull apart basins allowed volcanoes to form, specifically the Sultan Buttes and Clear Lake volcanoes. In the case of Clear Lake, it is not the San Andreas Fault itself, but rather a strike slip fault related to its motion. However, while the San Andreas Fault accommodates the vast majority of motion associated with the aforementioned tectonic plate collision, a series of faults in eastern California known as the Walker Lane accommodates the other 25%. These faults also serve as a path of least resistance for magma to intrude into, allowing for the creation of one large caldera complex and three other nearby rhyolite rich volcanoes. Which largely occur along a 33 mile long chain of activity. However, while included in the Walker Lane province, the Ubihibi craters could best be classified as within the Basin and Range province. This province is why large swaths of Nevada, western Arizona, eastern California, and other states have topography which largely looks the same. The area experiences slow extension, which creates a series of large fault lines in the crust, creating uplifted patches of land known as horse and subsided patches of ground known as grabens. Over millions of years, this process created many large mountain ranges and valleys. Upwelling mantle material then used these created faults as a path of least resistance, creating magmatic intrusions, some of which eventually erupted onto the surface, forming scattered but largely basaltic volcanic fields. Moving to the north, we have a province of volcanoes which infrequently erupt, but when they do erupt, generally produce voluminous basaltic eruptions which cover as much as 75 square miles and a layer of lava. What I'm referring to is called the High Lava Plains. Underneath Oregon, the Juan de Fuca Plate is being subducted underneath the North American Plate. The subducted crust from this collision then migrates upwards, creating the Cascade Range volcanoes. However, for an unknown reason, a portion of the subducted Juan de Fuca Plate has recently driven downwards at a much steeper angle. This caused material deep in the mantle to rise upwards and fill the void, which caused a number of basaltic eruptions to occur. 
Moving towards eastern Idaho and Wyoming, we enter a province of volcanics dominated by the underlying Yellowstone hotspot centered in the Wyoming section of the Yellowstone National Park. This hotspot, like many others, does not only produce volcanism where it is centered, but also in parts of its plume tail, albeit in a weaker manner when compared to the plume center and the direction of tectonic plate movement. As a result, basalt composition magma occasionally intrudes into the crust via crustal weak points along faults and rift zones, and some of these produce eruptions forming volcanoes like the craters of the moon. Meanwhile, the center of the Yellowstone hotspot is itself dominated by highly explosive rhyolitic eruptions. Our final two provinces are primarily centered in New Mexico. The first is a nearly straight line of weakness which stretches for 500 miles across Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. As 1.7 billion years ago, a large subduction zone existed across this very highlighted region. However, this subduction zone eventually suddenly shifted southwards, leaving large amounts of hydrous mineral-rich oceanic crust in the upper mantle and lower crust. This lowered the temperature which rock can melt at, causing the region to act as a permanent weak spot that allows partial melting to occur. In contrast, the center of New Mexico is splitting apart at a very slow rate of one-tenth of an inch every year to the east and west via what is known as the Rio Grande Rift. This rifting allows magma to seep into the areas undergoing rifting and regions that experience related stresses, allowing for the formation of volcanoes such as the Valles Caldera and the Carrizozo Volcano, which itself contains a 47-mile or 75-kilometer-long magnificent lava flow that is easily visible from orbit. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.